All right. Um, I wanted to do a video. I watched the, it's a very short sort of some of my observations. I watched the debate yesterday. Last night was uh, Tuesday night between Kathy Hochul and Lee Zeldin. Now, they're both, if you're familiar with um, American politics or local politics, these are the two candidates that are running for um, for New York State governor, for New York State governor. I, I tend to follow. I like to be up to date with, with things. And I was just, you know, it really left a, a negative aftertaste uh, for me. They were, uh, you know, th there were some issues that were addressed and it just got me to thinking about all the things that are important to the electorate, particularly to the American uh, electorate. You know, I was reminded that Disraeli, the prime minister, was a prime minister in England in the 1800s, Benjamin Disraeli. And he reminded us that in when you have a progressive, so-called progressive country, the change is constant. Now, what I, what I find sometimes so refreshing about some of the trends we're seeing in today's political debate is how we've really swung away from the smug assumption that change is bound to be towards always inevitably towards the left or towards the socialist or corporatist or collectivist way of doing things. And there are many smug assumptions that the American people and indeed other Westerners, I find primarily, have been hearing ad nauseum for ages. And many well-intentioned people are simply out of touch to be to in reality. Uh, of course, that's not the way that these individuals wish to present themselves to the electorate. Uh, you have to be very careful with smoke screens, you know, the cloud of excuses, explanations, justifications, which billow, right, from certain special interest groups. You know, they, we have smoke screen experts who, for example, want to cover up the truly appalling state of the economy. We just heard, and we, we've been hearing this in the, for the past several weeks, that we're not in a recession. We're not in a recession. We have never had an administration, and I cannot, I really, I'm not going to endorse anyone. Uh, it's not my style. Uh, they're, they're both deeply flawed, the, the political party. So don't take this as an endorsement either, but, but I'm just going by what we have, we've, what we've got today. We've got an administration in the United States that has just simply denied that there is an economic problem. It's just playing deaf all the time. It's the same smokescreen crowd that uh, that cry, they cry union bashing, right? Whenever, anytime you bring up an intelligent critique of the future role of uh, unions that we set out, or when you draw attention to practices such as some, in some instances, not always, but there have been some instances of intimidation at Starbucks from uh, people who do not wish to, uh, to be part of the union, and we've seen those. And of course, some press uh, likes to pretend that everyone is on board, or that all millennials and all young people are on board with unionization. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, a lot of unionization efforts have been failing. But again, this is not necessarily a rant against unions. They, they have their purpose and some of them are great. Some of them have done great things um, historically. I'm just going by what I see, though some of the trends that I'm seeing. Um, it's the same smokescreen people who come out in force. And anytime you mention that there is, uh, you know, anytime anyone mentions that there is an immigration problem, clear immigration problem, even admitted by Democrats, then they, the only thing that they could shout at you is racist, racist, right? And we try, despite the efforts, right, we do have an immigration crisis, right? Human beings are suffering. Human beings are suffering on the border. They are being played with. Um, through mixed messaging by this administration. And we tried, you know, despite the efforts of the rabble rousers, as I call them, to discuss in a reasonable way, we do have genuine fears and concerns. Many citizens, American citizens of all backgrounds, are concerned that the border is basically on, on, not patrolled. It's open border, it's open season. Lots of people are going to be suffering. Lots of people are dying coming through the border. This is a, a serious problem, uh, particularly in this country. Now, you know, I can tell the shouters, right, that we cannot have, and it's simply a fact, you cannot have a deep and passionate commitment to racial equality when you when you allow it to be smothered by the orchestrated clamor of lunatics who wish to shut down anyone that they do not agree with. Their clamor and their shouting, it's not going to conceal what I have repeatedly said. Now, I was raised to believe, through reason and justice, 
that all human beings should be equal under the law, whatever the color, whatever the religion, whatever the background, right? That doesn't matter. And all are equally important. And they must have the opportunity, like what we said, to fulfill their own destinies, free to live their own lives. But we now have the shouting and the lunatic fringes. You, you can't drown the voices of anxiety in this country and elsewhere also. We have to remove uncertainty where we can. You know, multicultural harmony in this country will benefit most if some of the, of the doubts about the future are removed. There are doubts on immigration numbers, for example, doubts on commitment, uh, ideas such as immigration reform. So those smokescreen makers, they try to distract attention from the real world. The world where our, look at our city centers today, they're decaying. We've got homelessness on the increase. Jobs are increasingly hard to find, good paying jobs, that is. You have, on the contrary, most people, they want to live in a world in which people and families can act more for themselves. They can, you know, people aspire to own their own homes, spend or save more of their earnings as they choose, run their own business uh, without harassment. We saw a lot of harassment recently uh, during the COVID period select their own ways of helping themselves and their neighbors. And yet the irony is that while we've got a state that's only too ready, we've seen it all the time, to interfere with every single economic detail of our lives, setting prices, uh, minimum wage, fixing wages, sometimes as we've seen um, this week in some of the courts, without they don't even bother to check whether their methods of interference are lawful. And it is actually failing to fulfill one of the most basic functions of government, and that is to protect people from criminal violence. Yes, I said criminal violence, and to see the law upheld. On the contrary, the country right now, we are in a grip, in the grip of the steepest rate of increase in crime that we have known this century. The police are understaffed, overloaded. You have experienced police officers, they're leaving forces like the NYPD at a worrying rate. Yet for Kathy Hochul last night, all is well. She talked about firearms legislation, and yet most of the daily crime in places like New York City have, has gotten very little to do with guns. There is a gun problem in this country. Yes, I agree. And more needs to be done about that. It is, it is simply absurd that we have people with such ease to buy illegal weapons. That is something that is on both Democrats and Republicans, particularly some of these. There are some uh, Republicans who have tried to uh, put obstacles in that. Republicans in the past were not so unreasonable. We've gotten, we have lunatic fringes in both parties now. They're running, the, the lunatics are running the asylum, basically. Uh, meanwhile, what we what we got at the prisons, they're full to bursting. Vandalism is growing. In some areas, people are afraid to even walk out of their own home uh, at certain times of the day. The American people are concerned, the real people are concerned about crime. And this is something that CNN is covering up, MSNBC is covering up. Even some Republicans do, do not even wish to talk about this issue. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised then that the respect for the law is dissolving. When the philosophy prevails, and here's what happens. That when, when you tell people that the state is responsible for just about everything, the way is open for a society in which the individual then feels responsible for nothing and towards no one. We have zero accountability being taught to our young people. And the state view dominates a dubious and uncertain quantity, as we have seen, a standard which varies from time to time, depending on what suits the politician best or on whom they regard as their friends and who their enemies are. A government which is going to protect people and property, that's one of the basic functions, one of the few legitimate functions of government. It must be committed to law and lawful behavior from its very roots. And it is very troubling to me from what I've seen last night in the debate. You have Kathy Hochul, who she kept going back to Trump, Trump, Trump. Trump is gone. Trump is gone. Um, and yet, and then Lee Zeldin uh, was, at times I found him a bit um, trying to evade certain answers because, of course, uh, he doesn't want to answer certain things that are legitimate concerns. For example, we do want to know what the position is on, what the real position would be on uh, abortion, for example. Although New York has codified abortion, uh, other, other states have not. It, it's, it's never in the Constitution, by the way. This is a, this is a state matter. Um, and there are other concerns that I have as well about, about both candidates, but it was really a circus, you know, just watching if this is the best that New Yorkers can do. I don't live in New York, but I see what's going on. Americans who don't live, who do not live in the major cities, 
we are seeing the decay of the cities, right? We are seeing what is happening to our, to our cities and everywhere. Now, I've lived all over the world. I've lived in England, right? And England is, um, I don't know how it's doing now, but I've lived, I've lived for a good part of more than a decade in England. I've lived in big cities as well uh, outside of England. I've lived across Europe. In, in, within the United States, I have lived in New York as well. And what I am seeing now is very, very troubling. And I hope that New Yorkers get their act together, stop defending criminals, and stop attacking people who wish to defend themselves. And I think that once you see that, once, once, you, once you start to see uh, a change in the national, particularly the city attitude of mind, then we are going to have um, much more progress will be made. That's all I had to say about that. And again, I'm not endorsing any particular candidate. Please don't say that because I'm not, I'm not, I've never said who I'm going to, uh, who I support. I can, I do not vote in New York. So uh, I have nothing to do with that. But I do observe because New York is an important city within the United States and it's a trendsetter in many ways. And, and so that's all I wanted to say about that. Hopefully things get better in this country, but I'm not going to hold my breath.